Hello friends, this video on lines and angles part 2 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Let's talk about the types of angles. See if you want to draw angle, you can draw one angle which is of this shape, 180 degree. You can draw angle which is of this shape. You can draw angle which is 90 degree. You can draw angle which is less than 90 degree. You can draw an angle which is greater than 180 degree. So that can be actually the same angle, but you have to think from this side. You see, there are so many possibilities of angle. And in all these cases, if you see, these are the vertices. So let me put the vertices as A, B, C, D, and E. And these are the arms. Okay, all these are the arms. So if you see, in one case, we have angle as 180 degree. One case we have angle uh, greater than 90 degree, but uh, less than 180 degree. This is 90 degree. This is less than 90 degree. And this is greater than uh, 180 degree, but less than 360 degree. So if you, you know this concept, right? You start from here, this point, and you move back to this point. This angle is 360 degree, complete rotation. So we have actually divided this into so many parts. So one is 90. So any angle which is from 0 to 90, that is one category. 90 is another category. And then from 90 to 180 is one category. And 180 is one category. And this whole thing is one category. That is called reflex angles. So we'll give this term. So uh, this 180 degree angle, that is called straight angle. Greater than one nine, greater than ninety, less than uh, one eighty. I think you know this. This is called obtuse. Obtuse angle. Ninety degree, you call right angle. Less than ninety degree, you call acute angle. This is. Reflex. Okay, so we have straight angle that is 180 degree, obtuse angle greater than 90, less than 180, right angle that is 90 degree, right angle is always 90 degree, and acute angle less than 90 degree, so it can be 30 degree, 40 degree, 50 degree, and reflex angle it can be let's suppose uh, 280 degree. Right, 190 degree. All these are examples of reflex angle. Acute angle 30 degree, 20 degree. Right angle is always 90 degree. Obtuse angle it can be uh, 100 degree, 120 degree. These are all examples of obtuse angle. Straight angle is always 180 degree. So these values are fixed, and these can have multiple values. And I think we know about these type of angles. Okay. So let's understand what is complementary and supplementary. See, complementary angles where there are two angles. When you see it's angles, it is not angle law. When you talk about acute angle, right angle, you talk about angle. Now it is angles, right? That is more than one angle. And these are actually two angles. So complementary angles, if two angles, this is angles, or let me write it as A and G L A S, right? whose sum is 90 degree. For example, I have an angle that is 60 degree. I have another angle that is 30 degree. So if you add these two degree, how much you get? You get 90. So they complement each other. So when you say somebody complements somebody, that means they, they make the whole family. Husband complements a wife, they make a whole family. Right? So, and what we need whole is 90 degree. Just a memory tip. So when you say complement, somebody complement each other or they complete each other, that means you form 90 degree. Supplementary, supply is always extra, right? So you have supplementary paper, supplementary is extra. So for supplementary, it is two angles whose sum is 180 degree. It is extra, right? Double or 90. So if there is one angle, let's suppose 90 degree. 
another angle that is 90 degree you add these two angles what do you get straight line that is 180 degree so that is supplement you can have more scenarios for example this is 120 degree plus 60 degree this will also give you total as 180 degree Correct. So please remember the terms, pretty uh, critical term in the maths geometrical world. Complementary means you complement each other, you complete each other and you get 90 degree. Supplementary is extra, so extra from 90 is 180. So as I told you in this, uh, if you start from here, you get 90 degree, this is first, then we, we consider this in priority and then you get 180 degree, yes, because if you see, something uh, anything from 0 to 90 there is a different category of angle right that is acute angle 90 degree itself is a different category of angle that is right triangle 180 degree is also a different category of angle called straight angle so these two angles 90 degree and 180 degree are special okay remember this way so some of two angles will be complementary in one case and supplementary in one case so for complementary use 90 degree, they complete each other. Supplementary is extra, so extra use 180 degree. Just a memory tip to remember that complementary is two angles whose sum is 90 and supplementary is two angles whose sum is 180. Any two angles. So we call it as a pair, complementary pair. And we will show you why this is important in geometry. A lot of the time, a lot of time we use this term, there's two, these two angles are complementary, that means their sum is 90 degree. These two angles are supplementary, that means their sum is 180 degree. Okay. So we have seen uh, good examples of angles pair. Now, if you see, let's suppose we have two adjacent angles. Adjacent, you know what is adjacent? When you say that my house is adjacent to Pizza Hut or my house is adjacent to school, that means your house is just next to the school, touching the school, right? So, and what if I have two angles adjacent to here? For example, there is angle 1. Okay. And there is again another angle 2. Now, if you see, angle 1 and angle 2 are adjacent to each other. There is a common arm. Right. This is an example of adjacent angles. Right. When I say, let's suppose I am saying, this is Ram. And this is Sita. Okay, I am saying Ram is standing adjacent to Sita. That means they are standing next to each other. Same thing. There is an angle, this angle and this angle, they are next to each other. Okay, so I can write a definition for you. Adjacent angles, two angles, it has to be two angles, are called adjacent if they have common vertex and a common arm you see this common arm okay and the non -con common arm that is these two are the non common arm okay let me write a name a B, C, D. So here AC is a common arm and non-common arms are on different side of common arm. Let me write there. And this is a definition. Okay, so there's a common arm, there's a common vertex. If you see both this, if you break these two angles in this fashion, let's suppose I just take them apart. So this is A, this is B, this is C, this is A, this is C, and this is D. You see, these two have actually common arm, A, and they AC, and they have common vertex. So that is the most critical condition for adjacent angle. They are adjacent man. 
means they are next to each other okay so in this example angle 2 and angle 1 are adjacent or I can say that angle BAC so when you say this angle you say angle BAC why so if you see you start from here then the vertex comes in the center so this is always the vertex so please note let me repeat example this is the angle okay so I can't write this as angle ABC I can't write this angle as C B A. I have to write this as angle B A C or angle C A B. So these two are incorrect, these two are correct. So if you see the vertex has to be in the center. Right? Either you say B A C or you say C A B. Both are correct. But you can't say just like that there are three terms here A B C. You can't say this is angle A B C because this is not actually angle A B C. Right? So if you want, if you see a triangle here. In an angle ABC is this, this, and this. This is the angle ABC. Okay, so please note the when you write the notation for the angle, the vertex comes in the center. This is angle BAC. So angle BAC and angle CAD. Angle CAD. You see both has A as the vertex. These are uh, adjacent angles. Okay, so in both these, if you see there is a ray. That is common, common arm that is AC. Okay, and they also have non common vertices, non common arm that is BA and ED, and they are on the different side of the common arm. This is a common arm, and they are on the different side of the common arm. Okay, and please note in this case, in this case, if you want to angle B, if I want to find angle BAD, angle BAD, what is angle BAD? This plus this. Plus. From here, let me write this. Here, here, right? So this will be nothing but angle one plus angle two. Correct? This whole thing. And what you can write this as nothing but you can see BAC plus CAB. Correct? Angle BAD is nothing but DAC plus CAB. So instead of DAC, I can also write this as actually angle CAD here. And this is instead of CAB, I can write CAB, I can write BAC. Both are same actually. Just I'm trying to show in both cases, if you see A has to be in the vertex. Both are, both are same, both are same actually. All these three are same. Okay. So that is the concept of adjacent angle. Then we have the concept of linear pair of angles. Linear means what? Straight line. Okay. So linear pair of angles are what? They are nothing but they have adjacent angles plus they are supplementary. For example, I have something like this, this is, let's suppose A, this is B, this is C and this is D. Here B is the vertex. So if you see their angle ABD is one angle, ABD and this angle CBD, another angle. These two are linear pair of angle. Why? Because they are adjacent plus that is adjacent second if you sum these two if you add these two angle what do you get if you add this angle with this angle right you get angle abc angle angle abc is a straight line 180 degree and thus they are linear pair of angles okay so linear pair of angle the sum of adjacent angles should be 180 degree or i can say that the non-common arm forms a line. See the non-common arms A, B and A, C. Sorry, A, B and B, C. So non-common arm forms a line. That is one definition. Or I can say that sum of adjacent angles is 180. So since the adjacent is already mentioned, one it is already mentioned that these two are taken here. So I can have two definition of 
linear pair of angles. But mm -hmm. from the concept perspective, we understand that if they are if they are two adjacent angles and their sum is one eighty degree, that is they are supplementary, then they are called linear pair of angles. Okay. These are just the definition we are trying to understand to solve good numericals. And trust me, the numericals of the geometry are really good. You have to apply some amount of thoughts and you can get the answers pretty easily. The next concept is with the vertically opposite angle. See, what we have done till now, we have uh, from a given ray we have formed angles and then we have formed edges and angles. Now let's suppose there are two lines and they intersect. And they intersect like this. So there are two lines and they are intersecting at some point and let that point be O. Okay. So now let's let you mark this point A, B, C and D. Okay. And let me mark some value for this. This will be angle 1, this will be angle 2, angle 3 and angle 4. And you do this using scale and pencil in your uh, sheet. You will notice that angle 1 is always equal to angle 2. Angle 3 is always equal to angle 4. This will be your observation. You can try this. You can pause this video for some time. Get the scale, get a pencil, draw a cross, and then you will see that angle 1 is always equal to angle 4, 2, and angle 3 is always equal to angle. And they are called vertically opposite angles. So if you see angle 1 and angle 2 are vertically opposite angle. Similarly, angle 3 and angle 4 are also vertically opposite. So if you don't want to write angle 1, I can write angle, instead of angle 1, what? Angle A, O, D. Angle A, O, D. And instead of angle 2, I can write that C, O, B. Angle C, O, B. Both are vertically opposite angles. So if you see here also they have common vertex. Okay. And then uh, let's take this 3 and 4. 3 I can write as angle AOC. And 4 I can write as angle DOB. They are also vertically opposite angles. They are four different. I mean they are same actually. This and this is the same. And this is the same. Instead of angle 1 and angle 2, I wrote this. But actually, I feel, see, if I write angle 1, you can visualize very easy. This is angle 1. Angle A, O, D, you have to find A, O, and D, then you have to visualize it. And that's why I use angle 1, angle 2. I'll be using more frequently in this chapter. In fact, you can do the same. It helps to visualize faster. If say angle 1, you can just say this is angle 1, angle 2, this is angle 2. And you can know it is a particular opposite angle. If I say angle A, O, D, angle C, O, B, you have to think what is A, what is O, what is D. Then you have to make out, okay, this is angle AOD and this is angle COP. It's very difficult to visualize. So, please use angle 1, angle 2, angle 3 or angle X, angle Y, angle Z to visualize easily. And geometry is all about visualization and understanding it. And once you understand it properly, it won't take much time to solve. Thank you. Visit our website examfear.com to watch more and more quality education videos. You can also attempt free online tests that are there in our website. You can also get access to tons of free study materials and you can also find free tutors and mentors in this website. Thanks a lot for watching.